Good morning, today I'm going to cover my number one favourite Gutenberg block ever. It's actually been my favourite block right from when Gutenberg was first launched. It's incredibly powerful and adaptable, but you may never have heard of it or ever used it. This block is incredibly simple to use, and once you master it, you'll be able to build layouts like these in just a matter of minutes. Awesome website banners with glass morphic backgrounds, video banners that will wow your readers, lovely service information boxes with varying styles and colours, masonry cards that add interest to your pages, pseudo parallax full screen images and creative new ways to display your information, in this case creating this really interesting window effect. So which block is it? Let's find out. Blocks. Block of the week, block of the week, yeah, block of the week. Which block is it going to be? Well, you will have to stick around, my friend, and maybe you will see. It's block time. And the block that lets us create all these awesome layouts is called the cover block. That's the block that lets us do it. It's got a bit of a rubbish name. I'll explain later maybe why it's called the cover block, but it lets us do all these things. So what I'm going to show you is the cover block itself some of the key settings that you need to understand, but also then I'm gonna talk you through step-by-step step how I did each of these layouts. It won't take very long and it's very cool, let's get into it. Right, I'm gonna start by adding a cover block to a page and explaining just some of the key aspects of it that you need to understand about it and where it gets its power from. So I'm gonna click on the block inserter, find the cover block and just add it into my page. When you first add the cover block, it's gonna ask you either to choose a background photo, either upload your own photo or video, or choose one from your library. So I'm just gonna click on media library and just choose one of my images here and that will add that image as a background. Now the key thing to understand about the cover block and where it gets its power from is that it's a container block. What that means is that it can contain other blocks within it and we can see that by clicking on the list view up here in the top. So can you see now we've actually got the top level cover block and then underneath to start we've, we've actually got a paragraph block and it's expecting me to write a title here but I don't have to. I could put some columns in here if I wanted to. I'm going to write a title for now. And you'll see this looks like a heading block, but it's actually a paragraph block because it's just a paragraph block with large text. If I want to see the settings for the cover block, which I do, you have to click on the top level cover block. This is the real key to understanding the power of the cover block, understanding the hierarchy of the blocks that you're working on. So if I click on the top level cover block, now I see on my toolbar along the top here some settings to do with the cover block. And I also see some settings in the right hand settings panel again to do with the cover block. I'm just going to talk you through these because these are really powerful and cool. So we're going to start with this one here. This is so you can set this the width of your cover block. So I could set this full width if I wanted to. You see now it's full width. When I actually publish this, this will bleed to the right end of the end of the screen. This option here, you can actually align where your text goes. I found a bit of a variance in that in terms of theme support. So don't that won't always work in my experience. Next to there, you've got this one, which is actually full screen. So if you want this to be full screen, which we're going to do in one of the demos later, it's just this little toggle here. This is where you can have this duotones on your images, on your background images. I'm not a massive fan of this. I can see it more. I see more use of this in full site editing. This replaces where you can actually choose a different image to swap out the image you've already used. And then you've got your normal three dots here where you can do things like duplicate and replace and delete. And over on the right, you've got some cool stuff. You've got this fixed background that will fix the background. So as you scroll up and down, I'll make this bigger here. As you scroll up and down, can you see how the background is fixed behind? It's that sort of pseudo parallax effect. You've got a repeat background, which you'll only really see if the image isn't the size of the space that it contains. So I don't really ever use that, to be honest. Then down here, down here, you've got some cool stuff. You've got overlay, so you can set an overlay color, but then you can also change the opacity of that overlay color. See how I'm just dragging this slider in and out, which is really cool. And you can choose gradients as well for your overlay colors, so you can get quite snazzy with this stuff. Then down here, you've got dimensions and you've got padding, so you can add extra padding around your cover block as well. So you can play with that when you, that's more useful when you're putting other blocks within it. And you've also got dimensions here, so you can add things like a minimum height of the cover. And you've got different units here, so you, you, I'm not going to go through each of these, but you could say, right, I want 50% of the vertical height of my, of my screen. So you've got some really powerful controls just baked into the cover block. Right, let's get on to how you can actually use these settings to create some cool layouts. Right, let's start with layout number one, which I'm calling the glass morphic background text background image thingy. <laughs> it's a really cool banner. But what's really cool about it is you've got this lovely full screen banner. You've got this text box here. But what's nice is you can see we've put a layer on top of that, but you can see through the layer. This is sometimes called glass morphism or frosted glass. I've actually done a previous tutorial on how to do this. 
using some CSS magic, but actually you can now do it in the core Gutenberg plugin. So let's start by adding the cover block into my page. Uh, let's add it in. I'm going to work very quickly here. I'm going to choose a background image. That's a pretty cool one there. Let's add that. Now it's asking me to write a title, but I don't want to do that. I'm actually going to start by adding some columns because this is a container block so we can put columns within it. So I'm going to type forward slash columns and add my columns block. Then you can choose the layout of your columns. I think I want my box over there, so I'm going to add that. So I've just added two columns in my cover block. We can see that now if we go to the list view, we can see we've got a top level cover block with a columns block within it and a left column and a right column. So always use the list view I would when you're doing any kind of work with container blocks. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to set this to be full height just by clicking that little icon. I'm also going to set this to be full width. So it's now the full width of my page. But I now have the structure I want to actually start to put some of the text in here. So what I'm going to do is just add a heading block in first. I'm going to work really quickly so you can see how easy this is. Then I'm going to add a paragraph block underneath. And again, if we check the list view, we can see that we've got a heading block and we've also got a paragraph block underneath. And now what I can do, I can actually select the column block here and I can add a background color to that column block. Now what's cool in the latest version of the Gutenberg plugin is that you can actually set transparent colors for the background of your boxes. So here we go, I've set the color, but can you see I've got this little transparent slider here. So you've got your main color slider above, but underneath you've got your little transparent and that sets the transparency of that little column. So you see, you can just play with this to your heart's content. Uh, you can choose different colors as well. I've chosen white there because I've got black text and I want the text to pop out a bit. And there we go, simple as that. Now the other thing that you can do with these columns is you can add a bit of padding. So let's just add 50 pixels of padding, but you can play with this so you can add more padding if you wanted to, just to get it how you like. And there's my beautiful glass morphic panel. Let's just publish that and take a look so we can see the finished result. And there we go. There's my finished result where I've got my lovely image, but my glass morphic background text with the frosted glass effect working. Video banners are incredibly simple now with the cover block. Let's show you how it works. It's very simple though. You can probably guess how it works. I'm going to add the cover block. And then in my media library, all I'm going to do is find my video. So I think I've got an MP4 here somewhere. I've got a few of them. I've got a nice time-lapse one here. And that adds the background to the video. Again, check your hierarchy here for the cover block. You can see you've got some settings over on the right. With the video block, you've got all the same settings available to you. So you can make it things like full height, and also full width if you want it to be the full width of your site like so. You can add other blocks within it, you can add column blocks within it, you can add buttons within it. Super cool. Right, layout number three. Right, layout number three is these cool service information boxes which you can use for lots of different ways on your website. Here's a few examples of the designs I put together. You can obviously create your own. Let me show you how simple these are to do and I'm going to give you a few tips on how to really speed up your workflow when you're creating these. And I'm going to start by adding the columns block. That's the secret here because the columns block is again a great block because it's a container block. Then you choose your number of columns, but in each column, I'm going to put the cover block. This is why it's so powerful. So I'm going to dump a cover block in column one. And of course, because it's a cover block, I can add a background and I can add other blocks within it. So if I want to put a paragraph or buttons within there, I can. Now the secret to working quickly again is your list view here. What you want to do is you want to duplicate that column or you're going to create it every single time. But if you duplicate it like so, it's actually just going to create these columns really quickly for me. And then I can jump in these other columns and delete them. And now I can just pop in here and replace the text. Because these are cover blocks, if I want to put other things within them, it's as simple as, you know, to popping a little image in here, choosing a photo. This is how I did my little people ones. I could align this here if I wanted to. And if I wanted to work quickly, I could delete those. I could make sure I click on the columns block here and duplicate this one. You see how fast this is once you start using the list view. It's such a great way to work. The other layout that I showed you there, let's get rid of these. Now because these are cover blocks, I can add a background image to each cover block. I can just add my media here in there and that will add a background image. And again, we can change the opacity over on the right. We can add different overlay colors. You can also, with the cover block, you can change the focal point just by dragging this little focal picker along here. And again, if you want to work quickly, just delete these, select the columns block over on the uh, left there and duplicate it. Just make your changes in each block to get those nice new layouts. One other time saving tip is of course, don't forget you can duplicate entire columns as well. So if you wanted, let's say nine boxes on this page, rather than having to recreate them each time again, I would just go to the top level columns block and duplicate that one twice. 
And now you see straight away, you've got that nice nine column grid on your page. And you can just jump into each box then and make your changes on each box. But you see how quickly you can create these really cool grid layouts now using the cover block and the columns block in conjunction with each other. Right, next up is the masonry card layout. At least that's what I'm calling it. We just need three blocks to create this layout. The columns block, the cover block and the spacer block. It's pretty simple to do. Let me show you how to do it. So I'm gonna start by adding the columns block into this page. I'm, I'm just gonna set this to two columns and then I'm basically gonna recreate this layout. Hopefully you can sort of work out in your mind how we're gonna do this. We're gonna start by adding the cover block into column one. Now I'm gonna work really, really fast here. Let's just add a background image to that cover block. And obviously you can put whatever text you like in here. And then the second block, what we're gonna do, we're actually gonna add the spacer block first. So I'm just gonna add the spacer block. And again, with the spacer block, you can change the size of it. So it's up to you. I think on the demo I used, I used 50 pixels. And then after the spacer block, yeah, you guessed it, we're gonna put the cover block after here. So I'm just gonna add the cover block again. You would probably spend more time than I'm spending on this. Choose your background image, you get the idea. And then after this one, we're gonna actually add another space of block and then after that we're going to add another cover block after that one and so on and so on what you can do again of course is use the list view up here to duplicate your existing cover block for speed down like so there's my cover block and then you can just drag these into the right place where you want it to go and continue and continue a good tip here is when you're building these hierarchy of blocks, it can get a little bit confusing what you're actually working on when you're looking at the list view. You can rename them now though, this is this is cool to know. So what you do, let's say I wanna rename this top one to make sure I identify it as about us. Skip over to the right settings panel, click on advanced, go to HTML anchor, and you just type in what you wanna call it, and then you'll see it over in the list view on the left, it actually gives it a name. So when you're working with more complex page layouts, I think that's a really, really useful thing for you to do so you can understand what's going on or your clients can understand what's going on on the page hierarchy. Right, this next layout I'm calling pseudo parallax because it's not true parallax, but it's sort of pseudo parallax. And you'll see as I scroll down, see how the image is behind and the other image kind of zooms up. It's called fixed background. It's super easy to do in the cover block. Let me show you how you do it. So let me add a cover block into my page and I'm gonna choose my background image. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set this to be full height and full width. And also you can put your text in here if you want to, but the key setting is over here on the right. But you, again, you'll only see this setting if you're in the list view and you'll click on the top level cover block, click on that. And this is the setting we want, fixed background. Now that cover block, you see how it's fixed as I scroll up and down, that's fixed to the background. And let me just duplicate that one and change the background image on the second one. Again, duplicating is just gonna make life so much quicker when you're working in the Gutenberg editor. Let's publish that go back to the site and there's my full screen parallax images. And again, I could write my headings and put paragraphs in here and buttons in here if I wanted to, but it looks kind of awesome. Right, this final one I'm calling Windows on the World. I kind of stumbled it across by accident actually. And it's one of the quirks of the cover block that you can do kind of cute stuff like this with it. It's really kind of weird, but I really like it. So I'm gonna show you how to do this just in case anyone out there wants to do this effect on your site. I think it's kind of funky. So again, we're gonna use the columns block and the cover block to do this, but there's one setting we need to do to make this work. So all I'm gonna to do to start with is add the columns block in first. I'm gonna do a two column layout for speed today. And again, you could change the proportions actually, that might be kind of fun. In fact, let's try that out now. And then you just dump your cover block in, in each column, but you choose the same image for each cover block. This is the key here. And then we're gonna do one more thing to make this fly. Let's choose the lighthouse again. And what we're gonna do here actually uh, for speed, let's try this out. I'm kind of winging this at the moment. What I'm gonna do is actually duplicate that column and delete that one. So we've got two columns the same width, which is kind of interesting. It'll still work, let's crack on. But what we need to do in each of these is we need to set the background as fixed for each one. Set the background as fixed because what that'll do, it'll actually pull in the same image for the whole screen which I still can't get my head around, but it's super cool. And now all I'm gonna do is actually duplicate. In fact, no, let's make these. What we're gonna do is duplicate them a few times. Now I haven't put different text in mine, but hopefully you'll see the effect once we view the page here. Rock and roll, you see that? How it takes the same image because we've set the same image as the same background. It kind of works and I really like it. But obviously you could put text in these boxes if you wanted to, or you could put different overlays on these boxes if you wanted to. So I think it's a really cool thing to try out. So I just want to answer the question, why is it called the cover block? Because it's a bit of a rubbish name. 
This actually, though, also addresses the most common question I get about the cover block, and that is, when somebody uploads a photo, why doesn't the cover block keep the proportions of your photo? And the reason for that is the priority within the cover block is the information. So on the screen, you can see I've got my cover block with some text in it. Now, as I resize my browser screen, can you see how it looks like we're actually cropping the image? We have to do that because if we didn't crop the image and it maintained its height, the text box would actually drop beneath the actual image and would look terrible. So thank you so much for watching. If you made it to the end, well done. I hope you found that useful. If you did, if you can hit the like button now, that would be amazing. Also, every time you do hit the like button, our cats get a little treat. So thanks again. A few of you have said that you're worried about our cats getting fat. Don't worry, the cats are not getting fat with all the treats. So keep, keep hitting that like button. If you want to see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified every time I release a new one. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.